unstoppable kick-ass confidence. Are you ready? Welcome to the Raw and Unscripted Show with Christopher Roush, where we help you overcome your self-created crap without the self-help fluffy bullshit. Now please welcome our host, Christopher Roush. Banana, 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 banana. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is I, your No Excuses Coach, back with another episode of the Raw and Unscripted Show with yours truly, Christopher Roush, the place where I help you overcome the self-created crap, your self-created crap without the self-help fluffy bullshit. And I'm excited to be here with you once again here in the podcast, the video cast show that's designed to elevate your opportunity to think differently about your past, present, and your future. It's an opportunity for you to consider your future in a much different limelight of possibilities and not um, potential regrets, which I see a lot of people doing. They're living their life with potential regrets and it's not fun. What's up, Mary Sterling? We already got, we already got the misfits for life in the house. Mary, good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for being here. You're going to love this gentleman. You're going to love this conversation tonight. I'm fired up. Why am I fired up? Lord, I just went camping. I went camping with my family. Now I don't camp camp. I glamp. And if you don't know what glamping is, glamping is glorified camping. So we actually have a really nice RV and uh, we towed it up about 45 minutes away from our house. And uh, it's a nice travel trailer. And uh, we had a great time. We went outside and walked and we went uh, down by the lake. We rode our bikes and we watched lots of movies and, and played and talked and made marshmallows and just kind of unplugged from the situation that's going on all around us in the world which is really neat because I didn't check social media. I didn't respond to messages. I was like, I literally need to go unplug my brain and get a, get a break because I take in a lot of energy from all you folks. Uh, I'm the no excuses coach. So I always have to make sure that I go back and rest. So at least four times a year, I try to get away for at least three or four days uh, just to kind of do a huge reset, just come back, bring you guys the energy, bring you guys the, the motivation because I too can go down some rabbit holes and get a little stuck in shit. So um, the point is that I take my own advice as a no excuses coach. I have to take my own advice because otherwise Otherwise, where would I be? I would, I would be, I would be in a puddle somewhere, uh, given everything that I've been through. Darlene's in the house. She's what's up? What's up? Because I've been waiting for ten o'clock with toothpicks, uh, with with toothpicks. Hello, <laughs> evening, everyone. You're gonna, you're gonna love this conversation, Darlene. You may, Darlene, you may have heard, you may have heard our guest on Clubhouse because you know we've shared rooms, been in the same rooms before. Um, so you may have heard who we know is the refresher sometimes uh, we know him. So I'm excited for you to be here. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys being here, whether it's live or on the replay means the world to me. I love doing this show. I love having these conversations that really my, my, my truest intentions with these conversations. And you can ask my guests every single time I ask them, what is it that you want to convey through the message to the people that are going to be watching this and listening to this? Because it's always my intention that you guys walk away with at least one aspect that you're shifted on, that you look at things a little bit differently, that maybe you have a more open perspective about uh, having conversations with people you disagree with, whatever it might be. My intention is to help heal humanity. My intention is to make this world a better place for what I do, what I say, and everything else that's a part of that so that I leave a legacy that says Christopher Roush will have fought for what was right and what was fair. He will have risked for which that mattered and you left the earth a better place for who he was and what he did. So I wake up every single day and I set the intentions to achieve that legacy. So if I die 10 minutes from now, at least I can sit there and say, Hey, I went out. Boom. Chris was right there. Mic drop. See, he's got the mic drop. And by the way, my guns, look at that. 75 hard, baby. I brought some guns back to the show. Of course, I think I put on about 10 pounds of booze and, and, crackers and chips and all sorts of delicacies, but I'm back on program today. I'm not doing 75 hard again, but I'm doing six days a week of healthy eating and one day of just blowing it up. And I've done that before and it works and you get excited about that one day. Uh, Tim Ferriss talked about it in the four hour body. I believe it was. Uh, so I like that. So I'm going to do that, but uh, I encourage all you guys to go out there and check out 75 hard. I did it, completed it and I'm excited. So yes, yes, yes. And one more thing, speaking about help heal humanity, this is I'm on the board of directors for this organization. Um, if you haven't seen my social media posts, please go check them out. Our CEO founder, Serena Buffalino, was boots on ground, is boots on ground in Haiti after the devastating earthquake that they just had again. We already know about the one they had previously. She was boots on ground. I've been sharing video images and, and we're gonna have some amazing stuff for you. But literally, uh, they are they are the first, we are the first, the Help Heal Humanity team is the first um, organization that some of these people have seen at all. Not even their own, Officials, nobody, they hadn't seen anybody. They had nothing. So we were getting them tarps uh, and food, peas and potato, uh, peas, uh, some oil and rice and just giving them food. They just had nothing. They had nothing. And what broke my heart was when she said, they don't even have, a, they want, they want us to, us to take pictures of them. 
get this. They, they want us to take pictures of them because they don't have mirrors. Think about that. <laughs> I never thought about that, right? It's not like, you know, it's just crazy what it is that we have. So if you're in any space or opportunity to, to do anything with that, please go check out my post. Uh, there's a relief fund that's set up there. We're doing sponsorships for our, for our kids to make sure they stay in school. Um, so yeah, help heal humanity. Keep your thoughts out for Serena. She's amazing. You're going to have to hear this story. I'm going to break this story. Uh, she went through something today that I don't even know about, but I know it's going to be mind fucking blowing because that's who she is. That's who she is. And that's why I'm on the board of directors with the amazing folks there. So anyways, we guys came here to hear a conversation. Did you not? Did you not? Thank you for uh, allowing me this little time here to talk with you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys. What's up, Jacqueline Rose? She's in the hat. This woman kick ass right here. Kick ass, unstoppable misfit for life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Do we have enough energy in the room? Are we ready for our guest right now? All right. So let me give you this introduction. I don't write my introductions. I go straight from my heart and my head. What, what, what it is that I know about the individual. So my buddy, Sean Jackson, uh, I did not know that was his name when I met him on clubhouse, me and him just started jiving, just started talking. We were in rooms together. He started inviting me to some rooms, had me speaking on some topics. And we just started having these open ended conversations and just really realizing that he and I from very different parts of the world, in a sense, are very much the same people. And you're going to find out why, because I did a little research on him. And I found out we have a few similarities that I'm, in, I'm not sure he knows about, but we're going to dive in the conversation. And our intention with this conversation is to have you guys leave here just a little bit more elevated, a little bit more feeling like you're empowered and in control of what it is that you can do with your opportunities right now. Because I know, I know, I trust me, I know. That's why I had to go take a break. I know a lot of you are struggling. I know a lot of you are struggling and you're afraid to admit it. You don't want to admit it. You don't want to reach out for help. You want to be strong. You're seeing everybody else on social media look so happy. Trust me, people. Trust me. Listen, everything on social media isn't what's fucking real. Sometimes people are struggling. So let's be what we can do to, out there to lift these people up. So my buddy, Sean Jackson, he's got an amazing story. He's a tenacious motherfucker. He's driven. He's goal oriented. He wants to take what was a mm, unbelievable story of, of his childhood and his upbringing and his life. He wants to take that and transfer that and make the world a much better place for who he is and what he does. Ooh. And he's just an amazing individual. So without any further ado, welcoming Sean Jackson to the Ron and scripted show. Sean, how are you doing tonight, brother? I'm doing well, Chris. How you doing, brother? I'm fired up, dude. Can you tell? Uh, I'm fired up too, man. I'm fired up too. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. So uh, I know where you're at. It's 10 o'clock at night. It's a little bit late. Um, I can't remember again, exactly whereabouts are you again? I'm in Maine right now. In Maine? Yeah, Maine. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh, where were you before? You weren't in Maine before. Man, I've always been in Maine. I'm from Florida originally. i just been oh. in Maine. Yeah, yeah, I'm from Florida originally. I came in Maine about five years ago. I got left here on vacation. You wait a minute. You got left. Let's. I, that wasn't how I was going to start out this conversation. But wait a minute. You got left in Maine on vacation. Let's just uh, yeah, let's start with that story. I got to hear this one. Yeah, I came up here after a bad breakup in Florida, and I met some guy who's originally from Maine, and his sister lives in Florida, so she comes in Maine like every summer for for vacation. So he invited me out here one summer, and I came out here with her and literally wasn't what, what I expected, man. Like it was crazy. And like, he tried to get me to do heroin. It was crazy. And yeah, I'm, I'm not a drug, I don't do drugs. And yeah, so he told me to get the bus back to Florida. And that was it, man. I had a bag of clothes and a pair of shoes on my feet. Wow. And so you just, you just, why didn't you go back to Florida? Why you just said, well, hell okay, I'm already here. Yeah, it's just, you know, sometimes you, you got to break away from your family to really find who you are as a person. Oh, yeah. And that's what I wanted to do. I really wanted to find myself. I wanted to grow myself. My mom died 11 years ago. She passed away in Florida. So I really wanted to move past that. You know, I, I wanted to grow as a man and find myself as a man. So I just, I just stayed in Maine. Damn, that's crazy. I had no idea that that story was even going to come out of this because I'm like, wait a minute, you got left in Maine on vacation. It was only five years ago, but that's tremendous. That just speaks to the, to the, to the, to the type of person that I, that I love who you are because you're, you're truly about that from every conversation that I've seen, every conversation that we've had, you are like me, you're able to take a situation that most people would find and react to with, with hatred and anger and resentment and hostility and all these different things. And you sat there and went, all right. What can I, what can I do with this? 
what can I, I can actually take this opportunity right here and right now with nobody around and figure myself out. Dude, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. You said, you said your, you said your mom passed away. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. That's another thing we have in common. My mom passed away. Geez. It's almost been 11 years ago. Same here. I know. <laughs> I know it was my my mom died July. I always forget the year. I think it was because I'm bad at that. I think she died July 31st, 2011. I yeah, think that's what it was. Mom died November 1st, 2011. Wow. Yeah. And let me guess something else. Uh, talk to me about your biological dad. Uh, he was never in my life. Me neither. <laughs> I t- did you know that? No, I, did, I didn't know that, Chris. Uh, did you know about the mom thing too? I didn't know either, Chris. Well, I, I know you know I was homeless. Yeah, I know that. Okay. And I think I think you might have been homeless too because that's where you got the inspiration to start something. So talk to us about that journey of being homeless. Uh, being homeless is crazy actually because I was in a bad breakup and she actually tried to ruin my life, you know, because I don't I never hit children. So she tried to call the cops and tell the cops I, hit, I beat her kid. And yeah, and... What happened was I was going to be a correctional officer during that time frame. And it, it's ironic, man, because thank God they had everything on file in the system from being a correctional officer. And there's like this man has no he's no he's no minute to society. So I got out like literally the next day and all my charges got dropped, dismissed, and expunged. But that's just a lesson learned, man. Like I I went there and like from there, I went from the shelter because I was living with her and I had nowhere to go. Again, I'm not from Maine, I'm from Florida. I have no family up here. Like, I have no family at all, man. And just literally just being in that situation, Chris, it was crazy, man. I had nowhere to go. So I just went to the shelter. I was homeless. And how long were you in the shelter system for? Five months. What did you what did you get out of that experience in, in, in meeting other people that are homeless and meeting all segments of society? What did you get out of that experience? A humbling experience. My first two weeks, I ain't gonna lie, I was crying. I was very emotional because that's not my background. I don't my, my family, I've never been homeless. I've never been in that situation, you know. So I had to really embrace it. And what what I got out of it is just to empower people, be able to look at it as, all right, yeah, I'm homeless. Let's get something out of it. Like, no excuses to get yourself out of it. You made your bed, let's lie in it, get yourself out of it, you know? So what did you do to get yourself out of that situation after being there for five months? And I'm assuming this is a breakup after the, this is after you got, a, you got left there. So then, so then you, you get there, you establish yourself. So you have another, you have a breakup and then you wind up homeless. Where do you go from there? How do you, how do you get yourself out of that situation? I started working. I started boxing. I started playing football. I started doing multiple things. It's crazy because they wanted me to stop working to get a voucher to get out of the shelter. And I told them, no, that's not me. I don't, I would never live out the state. That's not me. I'm a worker. I'm a hard worker. And I'm going to work to the day I die. And I stayed there. And like I said, I started playing football, started boxing, and, you know, started saving up money. I was never at the shelter. I just slept there, basically. So how old were you at this point? Because you're talking about playing football. Were you still a kid? Nah, I was 27. <laughs> 27 and playing football? Yeah, first first time playing football. Damn, dude, you hustle. You're like, you need to be a ballerina, I'll be a ballerina. You want me to be football, whatever it is. <laughs> so where, who taught you that hustle? I know the answer, but I want everybody else to hear it. Uh, who taught that hustle? It has to be my, my uncle, basically, as a kid. But I taught myself how to hustle. But my uncle, as a kid, really instilled that and told me because my father wasn't of a deal. So my uncle was just really a major role in my life. He he, he was a basketball star at Bethune Cookman College back in the day. So he played basketball his whole entire life. So he really instilled that to me at, at a young age. Mm, the hustle. The hustle. You know who taught me my hustle? Crazy enough, my mom. My mom yeah. taught me to hustle. I was thinking about her just a little bit ago. I was folding some sheets. And I remember when she was bringing me up everything, she's like, you do it with the best integrity. You do it with the best values. You know, you, you always do this. And so she always taught me to be unstoppable in a sense. I mean, I didn't ever really agree with how her methods worked, but I also know that by her demonstration, even when she came out of the hospital after being diagnosed with lung cancer and had uh, an open wound on her leg and she could barely walk, she was still getting up and taking care of her cats and going to the store. And, and she didn't want any help from anybody, really. Really, except for me, uh, 
imagine that. Um, but she taught me that tenacity. She taught me that, that, that no matter what you don't complain, you keep exactly. going. And she went through so much. She went through so much in the last couple of years of her life that I was amazed at how she was her, her leg after that wound got bad, her lane, her leg looked necrotic. It looked like it was burnt. I have a picture of it before it was amputated. I don't understand how that woman did it, but I definitely understand where I get it from because I'm in a lot of pain and I just keep going. I sit there and I think if somebody was in as much pain as I would, I'm, they would probably like be in the hospital or something like that. But I'm just like, yeah, it's pain, whatever. You just keep on going. What are your thoughts about pain and and, and our perception of it? Pain is a, it's a state of mind. You know, I think all the time, like my mom, just like your mother, man, she was a warrior too. And, you know, she instilled in me to get up and go no matter what. That's why now I go to work. I go no matter what, because my mother, she had sickle cell. She died from sickle cell, and mm -hmm. she had multiple surgeries, man. She had ports. She had open heart surgery. She had hip surgery, you know, and no matter what, no, how many surgeries, like, she always got up, and she always cooked. She always made a way for her two kids, me and my other brother, no matter what. She never complained. She never made no excuse. <laughs> she always got up and, you know, handled her business as a woman, and despite how she felt, man, so pain to me is temporary because if she can do it at having sickle cell and having surgeries after surgery after surgery then i can do it mm, i love that i love that hold that thought you know who david goggins is right yes sir yeah that motherfucker knows pain man he is psychotic <laughs> i mean i sit there and watch some of his interviews and i'm just i still watch him because i'm just amazing him but i'm just like he transformed my my perspective of pain you know i i actually i i i purposely studied him uh two months about a month or two months before i went to the hospital and had my major back surgery because i was like okay i'm gonna have to come out of this thing with a different perspective about pain um and so i just watched him and i watched james the iron man cowboy and i watched uh uh another guy i can't remember his name right now but david goggins man i was like what you know pain you know and i started thinking about that i'm like what if pain is actually good for us you know, we're, we're, we're told as kids, oh, you know, avoid the pain, avoid the pain, avoid the pain. Oh, the pain is bad. The pain is bad. I'm sitting there and I was, I did videos on this last year and I was walking in pain and people were like, Chris, you're stupid. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing 75 hard. You're in pain. You're in pain. I'm like, what if the pain was signaling me to work harder? What if, the, what if the surrounding muscles and the surrounding tissues were weak, so weak that the muscle that's in pain is screaming for me to work out so that those other muscles and tendons would get strong. And I learned that from Goggins. I was like, what if, what if, what if? Fast forward, um, I'm walking. I, I can't walk like I, I couldn't walk. I can't walk like five or six miles anymore. But I usually do about three miles every other day. And for a while, I couldn't walk for more than 10 minutes. But I just kept pushing myself and pushing myself. And it still hurts. But I've, I've changed my perspective and my association with pain to sit there and say, hey, I'm alive. I'm alive. And I'll share this real story. And then I'm going to go to my comments here in a second. But here's another perspective shift for you, ladies and gentlemen, thinking about pain. When I was bitching about my pain before my back surgery and I was on Percocets and all this other shit and I was, I was like, okay, how can I shift my perspective? This is what I do as the no excuses coach. I was like, how can I shift my perspective about my situation right now? Because I'm feeling a little bit like a victim and I'm feeling like a little pussy. Um, what can I do? And in that, in that situation, um, in that situation, I was able to really just I don't know. I was, it was, it was something that was calling to me and I started thinking about it and it was a story. And I was trying to think about like, why, why, why am I happy about my pain? And then it dawned on me, one of my friends, my friend's friends kind of from back in the eighties, back in the old days, uh, he got drunk, long story short, he got drunk, uh, fell over onto his daughter's wood table and the wood table broke and part of the wood went into his back and it severed his spinal cord. And he laid there. I can't remember the exact number of hours, but I think it was like 13 hours screaming and then finally a gardener put a ladder up to his apartment and got him out there but he was paralyzed from the neck down from the shoulders down basically he could have a little movement in his legs or his fingers a little bit but i sat there and i thought would mike big mike would big mike want my pain right now yes big mike would love to have my pain right now because he doesn't feel anything Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about that in the comments. I just want to go over here. We got Jacqueline in the house. Jacqueline says right here, she goes, peace, love, light, and massive learning from one of the best there is. I think she's talking about you. We got, we got Darlene in Florida's in the house. What's up? She's like, yay, what's up, Florida? We got Robert's in the house saying hello to everybody. Thank you so much for being here, Robert. I appreciate you. Um, and uh, we got 
Um, absolutely. We got uh, Jacqueline says here, thank God I'm a free, I'm a, I'm a spirit fly with me, but don't cage this Irish. But yeah, you got to, you got to get friend request her on, on Facebook. She's a, you're a dynamo. You're just a dynamo. She'd like, gets, she'd get knocked over by a hurricane item. Be like, fuck you. You would, huh, Jacqueline? I know you would. I know you would. All you misfits for life. All you misfits for life. You guys are beautiful people. Beautiful people. Beautiful people. Um, so beautiful people. Beautiful people. You're a beautiful person. You know that? I'm talking to you. Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you know you're a beautiful person. Okay. So I happen to know you're you're a hard worker. So in in what we're hearing right now about this this generation resignation people are quitting wanting to be on unemployment don't want to work everything wants they want everything to be easy they want to be an overnight sensation they want to be the social media superstar they want the amazon microwave mentality like oh i just i just want to take a class i just want to do a couple of posts and for it to go viral what do you say to people and and what advice do you give them to get the inspiration to hustle like you do and tell them how you hustle because i know you do it's first find what your biggest why is Ooh. discover what your biggest why is right and then if you're suffering to implement your three s's in life which is suffer sacrifice and success so then sit down and reflect because our generation has a bad time of reflecting reflecting time is very very vital you got to reflect got to take that time to reflect regroup and recap you know and just go out there and attack be in attack mode, have a relentless effort, you know, and from there you will see success. So, um, tell us a story about what, how you do that. How does that apply in your life? What is your big why? My biggest why is my children and just to be great. Like, for example, my son texts me this morning, sent me a photo of him playing football and he, him walking on the football field. I was proud. I was like, wow, like my son, he's back home in Florida by the way. And like, he started, how old is he? He's eight. Okay. Yeah. And he started playing football because of me. Like I, I ain't started playing, like I told you earlier, I ain't started playing football until I was 27. And he called me up one day like, dad, I want to play football just like you. You know, I, I even asked him, Chris, I was like, who's your favorite football player out of all the NFL players? He's like, dad, you're my favorite football player. Oh, and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. And that just drives me like to go even more harder, like to go out there and just accomplish whatever I can for my kids, open how many doors I can for my kids, you know, so they, they, they can be great as well, too. I want to meet the NFL commissioner one day, like if I can. <laughs> oh, really? And that's I want to. I want, I want to help my son out. He want to go to the NFL. I want to collaborate. I'm, I'm business. I'm all about business. If I can sit down and meet people like that. And get my like I'm I'm all about it. Just helping my son out to get to his next level, what he want to do in life. So how would you how would you describe your why? When you're when you're looking for motivation, you're looking for inspiration. It's three o'clock in the morning. You've been up doing a show until eleven o'clock at night. You're tired. What, how do you how, how do you translate that into into your why? I tell myself I can, I will, and I must be great for my children. I tell myself that every single day when I'm delivering packages for FedEx. When I'm having a bad moment, I tell myself, I can, I will, I must get through this for my children. You know, I'm gonna take something from today rather than going through the day. And Ooh, something from today, except for instead of going through the day. Ooh, nice. So you're making every moment count. Exactly. Nice, nice. So, um, so your son is eight, and how many other kids do you have? I have a daughter, she's four, and that's about it, two. Yeah. Is she in Florida as well? I know. She's up here in Maine. Nice. So what have you learned from being a dad aside from your why? What are some of the, what are some of the lessons that you've learned from being a dad? My son's five years old and I have learned quite a bit about myself and about life and about people and about different things. But what, what are some of the things that you've learned as a, as a father? That kids are sponges. They, they're, they're literally watching our every move. They're watching us, you know, they're watching what we do, how we turn out, how we move, what we're working on, and stuff like that. And I, I strongly believe how we turn out is how our kids turn out. Because if we are here motivating the world, empowering people, uplifting people, doing phenomenal things in the world, then our kids going to want to be the same and do the same, if not be better. And I love that, you know? Mm, mm. Nah, I love that too. I love that too. It's um, it's um, it, I think about things in terms of 
when I think about like your why, because that's something I always talk about is like, if you have a big enough, why you have a big enough, how, and for me, that's when I wrote my, when I wrote my eulogy back in 2008, that was, that became my why. So it was like, here's my why that in every moment I am taking the action that will fulfill that legacy. That's my why. And then when Jackson came along, I was still using that, but I, I again, always looking for perspective shifts, always looking for the opportunity to become better, the opportunity to, to, to refine whatever it is that I might be thinking about. So I was like, I love asking myself questions, love asking myself questions. Actually, I'm looking at 24 questions. I'm creating a list of the most powerful questions that, that I know of just for me, just for my questions, not because you can go get a list anywhere, but I just think about thinking in terms of what question could I ask somebody in such a way that they would have no other choice, but to recognize their situation that they're in so they can change it. So in my perspective, I was like, what can I do? And I started becoming fascinated with, with what our best is like one day I came and I was putting my keys in my dresser and I said, I'm like, I did the best I could today or I did the best I could with something. And cause I was reviewing it in my brain. I'm like, what the, what is that? Where did that come from? I did the best I could. What? Oh, that's the shit. That's the kid. That, that's a kid thing we, we, that we do. Chris, did you do your best? Yes, I did. Okay. Do better next time. Okay. They never define what our best is and they never define what better is. We get a jet out of, get out of jail free card. And we're like, Oh, I did my best. Oh, you did your best. Okay. Do better next time. Oh, you keep trying, baby. You're going to get it one day. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what life would be um, if, if we actually quantified what our best was and really refined that? So for me, thinking about my best and thinking about my perspective shifts, I said, okay, what would I tell Jackson to do with this situation as it would apply to him? So if I was having a problem with somebody at work, I would sit there and say, if Jackson came to me and said, dad, I got this problem with somebody at school, there being this and describing my coworker or whatever it is, what advice would I give Jackson? And that is what I need to implement. So when I started doing stuff like that, that gave me a bigger why to raise the standard of who I was being, but who I was becoming. Because I could sit there and say, that guy's a fucking douchebag. I'm going to go trip him down the hall and watch his, you know, whatever. Huh? Shift. Jackson. Sometimes there's going to be people in your life that are going to upset you and piss you off. You're going to have to recognize that it's not about you. It's about their situation and what they're going through. You're choosing to react to the situation and take things personally, you know? And so I started reformulating situations in my mind. It was like, ah, I'm not mad anymore. I feel sorry for you. Dude, you're all right. Whatever you need. And I just started shifting my perspective. It changed my reputation. It changed my success. It changed my happiness level because I was like, I was no longer tied to, oh, I have to prove something or I have to be right about something. And for me, that was one of the biggest shifts in, in having kids was recognizing it's not about me anymore. It's about them. Like you said, setting the example. And I, and I have another situation for that because I want to ask you a question. Um, actually, no. Tell me, tell me a situation with your kids where you, where you would have done something differently, but you considered them and thought about it and changed in that point. When I was homeless, I almost gave up because like I said, I never was homeless. I ain't never, I ain't know what to do. My first two weeks in the homeless shelter, I was surrounded by negativity. If people know, like when you're homeless, like is you just literally surrounded by negativity everywhere. And it, it's, it's, it's draining, you know, it's really draining. And I almost gave up, but I didn't. I really had to think of my kids because I thought to myself, if my son was in the same situation I was in in the future and he calls me for advice, how can I give my son advice to get out of that situation if I can't get out of that situation? You know? So Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's what happened, man. So I really had to find myself and I did. Yeah. Do you, do you remember what your darkest moment was in your life and what you thought and how you changed where it was you were at emotionally, lost, mentally, physically? When I lost my mother, that was like the darkest time. You know, my mom passed away. She was really close. My mom supported everything I did. You know, there's no question asked, even though she was sick, she was in the hospital six months out of the year, you know, but she, she, she made it a point to be a mother and she, she was always there, you know, whether she was limping, on a walker or in a wheelchair, <laughs> she was there, you know? So that, I think the darkest moment of my life was losing my mother. And I had to realize that, okay, life is short. It's time to leave a legacy. It's time to impact the world. It's time to be great and be a better version of yourself. It's time mm. to make your mother proud, you know? And that's, that's what I wanted to do. 
Mm, that is beautiful, man. That is beautiful. I know I've been in some pretty dark places before. Um, and you know, it's just, it's, it's kind of like by the grace of God, the source universe that I'm still sitting here. I mean, I tried to kill myself twice. Unfortunately, I sucked at it. Let's be honest. But you know, with what you're saying right there is you're, 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 you're taking responsibility. And that's what I, I was leading up to these questions because I want people to see that throughout your journey, you've taken responsibility. You, you haven't put a poor me on, on anybody. You're like, what is the situation I'm in that I need to learn and grow from? And, and you know, as well as I do, there's a lot of shit going on in the world right now. Obviously we got COVID, we got, uh, we got the murder of, uh, George Floyd last year. We have, um, uh, political unrest. We, the world is just like crazy right now. And so many people are, are, are struggling, uh, in those dark moments. What are some of, what are some tips and opportunities and strategies specifically that they can take from this conversation with you and I to be able to sit there and say, okay, listen, I'm no longer going to be a victim anymore because I think that's one mentality that a lot of people have is that they're a victim and they need to switch that. So what, what are some opportunities for them to change that attitude about being a victim and resourcefulness? So many people tell me, oh, Chris, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I don't know this. I don't know that. So talk to us about strategies for the victim mindset and for resourcefulness, because I know you have a lot to say about that. So being a victim, like you always just be proud of yourself. Never be a victim. You know, just be proud of yourself. Consider yourself as a victor. Set as a victim, you know, because in life, I don't care how big you get in life, you're still going to have tragedy. You know, you're still going to have deaths in the family. You're still going to have cousins getting locked up. You're still going to have people coming at you. And you just got to be able to take the good with the bad, you know, and stay focused and press forward. And that, that, that's about it, you know. And as far as the other question goes, Chris, well, let me, let's stop on, stop on that one. Cause I want, I want, I want to push back on that a little bit. So you, you had a mom that taught you tenacity. You had your uncle, you've had a lot of positive influences in your life to get you where you're at today. And you've had challenges. You have, it's not that you haven't had challenges. Well, what about the people out there that grew up with, you know, completely asshole parents, you know, just different situations that they've had and they haven't had the opportunity to have as much motivation and inspiration in your, in your, as you have had in your life. They're, they're going to, the immediate pushback is going to be like, well, that sounds really easy, Sean. Thank you. I'll just, I'll just choose to be a victor now. Right. You know, when they've been, when they, when they, when they've actually perpetuated their beliefs over their, over time that they're not a victor, that they're constantly going to struggle and constantly be in the state of despair. How do we get them out of that? I mean, I, I definitely understand that, but what are some, what are some strategies to, to pull them out of that? To empower your mind every single day. You know, so you want to cut out the negativity, period. Negative music, music, negative people. Like you want to listen to, like, for example, me, I listen to empowerment music every day, all day. Like I listen to Goggins. Goggins is one of my favorites. I listen to, I listen to Tony Robbins. I listen to Grant Cardone. I listen to Eric Thomas. Like right now, I listen to Eric Thomas. And like I'm constantly feeding my mind with positive energy. So, because like out of 365 days, we're human, Chris. We're going to have a, like we're going to fall. We're going to fall one day. But the power of empowering your mind is when you do fall, you're able to pick yourself back up like that. You know, and that's why it's, it's very important to empower your minds to surround yourself around people that's going to celebrate you and not tolerate you. Ooh, celebrate you, not tolerate you. There's another one, ladies and gentlemen. There's another <laughs> one. Um, yes, that's what I was talking about. That's what I was talking about. You said music, you see, called it something music, uh, inspirational music. Was it just their interviews yeah. over music or is it? Well, it's like. For example, Eric Thomas, he's playing, um, he's speaking in front of an audience right now, and he's telling people to be a diamond, that in life, you know, people, we go through heat and we go through pressure. Diamond is, a diamond is formed through heat and pressure. And if we could bring our mind to be a diamond and realize that in life, we, we go through heat and pressure, we get to a certain point that we are unbreakable and that we're ready to be cut. Ooh, so, so you're listening to the actual, I, I just, I just want to make a clarification. There was, it was not, I thought it was, a, I thought you said music motivation or something like that. Like it was motivation set to music. And I was like, Oh, okay. Like, a, like, like ACDC to Tony Robbins. Like I could listen to AT, ACDC song and Tony Robbins quotes are in there or something like that. But no, to your point, absolutely. I was in that, the truth be told, I was in that situation this morning. My mind was kind of funky when I first woke up, I was out camping and drinking and just not, you know, just being, eh, so my, I know my, I know my physiology's off. And I was like, Ooh, why do I feel like this? 
And I said, oh, I knew what I need to do. And I put on my Audible book and I listened to Jan, uh, to Dennis Waitley's uh, The Psychology of Success. And he said two or three things and, I'm, and I latched onto them. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. So you're absolutely right. It you're works, absolutely man. right. It mm -hmm. works. I'm, I, I'm trying to tell people that all the time, like you want to listen to inspirational music. If you listen to music that's saying, oh, life sucks and this, that, and that, you, you're not going to get no better. <laughs> it, it, means, no it goes back to garbage in, garbage out. I yeah. mean, it really is. That's why I go. I love going on Clubhouse and listening to people and pouring into people and restoring my faith in humanity from all the bullshit that goes on in social media and the news and everything. So yes, no, I love that. I mean, that's so important because even to the point where, let me ask you this question. Do you have a morning ritual? Every morning, yeah, I wake up, I do push-ups, I put on Eric Thomas, and I get up and I just start my day. Nice. Yeah, I start my day. Um, do you know how I start my day? Let's see if you know. By working out like me? No. No? <laughs> oh, so you haven't done your research now. I, I just say it a lot. So here's how I start my day, just for your benefit and for uh, for everybody's benefit here. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Jeez. Uh, good to see you. I've got Don in the house. Don says, hi, Christopher Roush and Sean Jackson. Grateful to be here. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Um, yeah. And actually, Robert says here, talking about that, because that's a great association to keep, you know. Um, yeah. And then he says here, this is how diamonds are formed. Thank you, Robert. You're awesome. You're a diamond. I uh, just want to make sure I didn't miss any comments up in here. Um, oh yeah. Don says up here, she goes, caught the live before bed. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We appreciate, we appreciate. And Darlene says here, uh, yes, I did my best today. I did my best today. Um, did I ask you a question before I went there? Yeah. No, no, you didn't. You, okay. You didn't. So let's, let's take that. Let's take that. So I appreciate that. Um, the second part of that question was, let's see, victim. And the other one was about resourcefulness. Talk to us about being resourceful. That's very important. That's very vital. Cause you don't have, you don't need all the money to, to start a business. I have all the money in the world to start my business. I was just resourcefulness. I was just out there working, building my brand and making my name for myself as a hard worker, having good character. That goes a long way. I tell people all the time, as long as you got good character and a great work ethic, you know, everything else is going to come along with it. So just continue to work hard and be like, just bring value to other lives. You know, the more value you bring to other people's lives, you know, then the more success you'll see. You want you, like I tell people, you will need a million dollars to go get an LLC. You will need a million dollars to, to get apparel or to get your business started, you know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Cause you know a little bit about that. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yeah. Talk to us about, talk to us about that, that journey. Cause I know part of it. Uh, yeah. My journey, I started my business, what, two, two years. I, I got my LLC well, a year, a year and a half ago. It was very, I feel proud of myself when I first got it. And yeah, it was just a journey and being able to have my LLC and have my own business it, it feels good i tell people all the time when you have your own business now you're able to work for yourself you you can never get fired in your own company <laughs> mm -hmm. like That's you, can true. Be, you can be the best worker on any job literally you can be the best worker but the minute you do something wrong they're gonna fire you right so that's why i'm proud of myself for getting my llc it's a process but i tell people all the time you gotta fall in love with the process it's it's, it's not easy but if it was easy everybody in the world have an llc you know, so and the whole process is you guys got to go like, for example, me, I go through rocket rocket lawyer to get my rocket LLC. rocket lawyer. Yeah, rocket lawyer. I've never heard of that one. I know I my buddy just did it through um, the big one. Uh, what's the big one that does all the filings? Uh, I just forgot it. I did my company through that. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, Maine. So, you know, Maine's a small state. So rocket lawyer. I'm going to I'm going to write that down. Yeah, Rock. Yeah. See, I'm taking notes, ladies and gentlemen. Rocket lawyer, or I could just say, "Hey, Sean, tell me that again later." No, I'm just kidding. We got to take notes. We got to take notes. Got you. Yeah. Well, we got some people on the house. We got Lynn Serrano in the house. What's up, Lynn? Good to see you. She says hello, hello, hello. Um, she says, "Amen." Preach it. We got Kimberly. Kimberly, hey, badasses. What's up, Kimberly? Good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, transformationalbadass.com. Go check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Just a little plug right there. Transformationalbadass.com. Kimberly says, hey, Lynn, what's going on? She says, this is fire. Ooh, this is fire. Hands up. Moticons for you guys listening here on the podcast. Um, let me think of what question I want to ask. 
Ooh, let's do that one. Let's do that one. What are some of your favorite questions to either ask yourself or ask your clients uh, to, to inspire different thought? I always ask my clients, what are their dreams, their goals? Like, what are their aspirations in life? I ask them that all the time. I want to, I want them to, I want to refresh them that because you got to stay focused on the primary goal at hand. That's achieving your goals to bring your goals to fruition. To not allowing nobody to stop you for allowing your goals to come to fruition, especially if you got kids. Right. So I ask them that all the time. Like, what are your goals? What are your dreams? What's your five-year plan? What's your two-year plan? What's your one-year plan? <laughs> like, do you have that stuff written down yourself? I definitely do. I definitely do. That's very vital. I believe. I believe you. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I believe you. In you know, and and thinking about that, you know, so many people don't have stuff written down. They have the, they have the someday game in their brain, right? They're playing the someday game. They hope and wish and pray. Oh, when the kids are this, or when this happens, or when he does this, or when she does that, then we can play the someday game. But you said something earlier that's so important: is the fact that we only have moments. This is what we have right here and right now. We have moments. And we have an opportunity to create a roadmap to where it is that we want to go. And like you said have it written down. I'll be honest. I did a crappy job this year of writing down my goals. I did. I did. I actually, I, I'm, I'm very cognizant about it. I thought about it the other day. I mean, I'm pretty good at my goals. I mean, it's not like I just go, Oh, what? I forgot I was going to, you know, increase this or change this or do this. I didn't, I don't forget them, but normally I'm pretty more meticulous about writing them down and keeping it in front of me. So thank you for that reminder, because I just realized and recognize that again. Um, but thinking about going back to resourcefulness, I want to tie in resourcefulness and, and excuses because the thing that blows my mind is people come to me all the time as a no excuses coach. And this is there say, Chris, you know, I just don't have the time. I don't have the money. Um, that's where I came up with the resourcefulness part of it. But there's Google and YouTube. There's Google and YouTube. There's There are massive resources and opportunities right now for all of us, you and me included, to, to learn what it is that we're deficient in to be able to come greater. Why do people avoid going down that opportunity to change their life when it's literally laid out. Like if you have financial issues, Google how to get out of financial ruin. Okay. I have to suck shit and do this for five years, but then I'll be out of financial ruin. Okay. In five years, I'll be happy where most people go oh, five years is too long. I'll figure something out before that. Then they get into more financial ruin. What's that thought process for you? Like in thinking about what people can do to, to stop their excuses when they have the answers and, and the opportunities right in front of them. Start trying to impress others and take time to themselves. You know, a lot of people, literally our generation, well, my generation, my generation in particular, are so caught up with being around their friends all the time. You know, literally going around friends, going out drinking, going out to bars. That don't get you nowhere. You have a clear mind, you can't think. You got to sacrifice that. You know, you got to sacrifice that. You got to sit down, you got to think. And... That's you get really. That's no excuses. Like you, no excuses. You know, if you're going out drinking and having a good time with your friends, but you got other important stuff to handle, you can't really sit there and blame nobody but yourself. Boom, boom, boom. You know what? A great question that I like in that situation is: Is this getting me closer, closer to, or further from my stated goal? Is this getting me closer to or further from my stated goal? So if we have our legacies mapped out, like you and I were talking about before, we have our legacies mapped out, we have our why mapped out, then in those situations can go, hmm, temptation. Okay, is this getting me closer to or further from my stated goal? Okay, it's getting me further from my stated goal, so do that. When somebody goes, I just want to... I love, I love um, Mel Robbins, 54321. You familiar yeah. with Mel Robbins? Five, four, I love that. I love that. I went through this yesterday. I tested myself yesterday. We came back from camping. And normally when I come back from camping, I don't quit my 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 fun lifestyle until the next day. So I come home, get everything locked up, cleaned up, have a couple of drinks, eat a pizza, whatever. The next day is when I start. But yesterday I thought, what if I just didn't do that today and then woke up tomorrow and felt just a little bit better and was a little bit more productive and, little, and did a little bit better show and, and had a little bit more conversation and better relationships with people in the house and everything. And so I said, would I be happy with this decision tomorrow if I did that? Even if it was just a couple of drinks, it was nothing. And I'm like, no, I wouldn't necessarily. And so I didn't. And then I was out walking this morning and I was like, man, Chris, are you happy with that decision you made yesterday? And it, honestly, my brain went, it would have been no big deal. But because I was accountable, because I was disciplined, because of what I learned in 75 hard, I was super fucking proud of myself because it wasn't about the drinker. It was about the fact that I made a con conscious awareness in a situation that really had no leverage in it. I was like, eh, whatever, no big deal if I do or don't. But 
the prowess in my mind to sit there and say, that was just one little step, one little click closer to that legacy, dude. You just got one step, one, st one click closer. So, um, I'm proud of you, Chris. I'm proud of you, oh, baby. Oh, because that's, that's one thing we don't do as people nowadays hold ourselves accountable. Oh, yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm proud of you for doing that, man. Because I, I hold my own self accountable all the time. And if, if people nowadays can hold themselves accountable, I'm telling you, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's, it'll be cut out. <laughs> uh huh. I mean, you work 70 hours, you worked 70 hours what week? Uh, last week, and I'm on the verge doing seven day hours this week too. So, and you get up at three o'clock in the morning. Yep. And you go until you're you're going to be eleven o'clock at night here in a minute. Well, I get up at three. I go to the gym. I mean, I'm in the gym by five thirty. I give myself like an hour and a half to work out on my body. I'm two years straight doing that. I'm on the 128 day week street. For working 128 out. day week street. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn, dude, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Well, I see your pictures. I see your I see your Instagram posts. I see your 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 little time thing on there. I used to do that shit, like making people feel guilty. Like I'm at four o'clock at the gym, motherfuckers. You're still sleeping. <laughs> and so you be like, dude, I hate your posts. I'm like, don't look at them or get inspired by them. Exactly, exactly. I love doing it because I love I love inspiring people to get up and work. You know, while you're sleeping. I mean, sleep is 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 important, but. You want to get it when you when you really tired. You don't want to sleep because your mind tell you to sleep. You know, because mm -hmm. then not because now you're missing opportunity. Now you're missing opportunities. Don't want to miss opportunities, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot do that. We cannot do that. Speaking of opportunities, I, we still have a few more minutes. I want to I want to take advantage of this talk to you. I know this is going to this is going to be a great part of the conversation that will end the show, so you can get to sleep. Um, the youth, the youth, our brothers and sisters out on the streets. Our 12 year olds, our 13 year olds, our 18 year olds, our 22 year olds, our five year olds. You know, we got so much, so much going on right now. And I've been thinking about this in my brain because I'm so passionate about helping adults and, and being that coach for everybody. But I'm starting to think at 52 years old, mm, we got to start more focusing on the kids. You guys are all seem to be stuck in your ways, don't want to change shit, want to bitch, piss and moan, want to blame, want to want overnight. Who's going to do what for me? These kids. These kids are going, like you said, I, I could do that. And, and those guys are all fucking pissed off and miserable. Or I could do that. And, and, and Sean and Chris, they seem pretty happy. What do you, what do you say to the parents of kids these days to inspire them that it's not about them? Like we said earlier, that it's about the kids. What can we say to the parents that are, that are, that are, that perhaps don't even recognize what it is that they're teaching their kids indirectly with their actions. What can we say to the parents tonight to have them associate a bigger why with their actions and their responses in the world today? Just be the example every single day, you know, through heartache, through pain, through bad days, through good days, be the example because they watch it. You know, Kobe Bryant said a, a quote, and I listen to Kobe Bryant. He said that when he had pulled his Achilles, I'm, I'm not sure if you know who Kobe Bryant Kobe, Kobe is. Kobe's like one of my favorite football, uh, basketball Do I players. know who Kobe Bryant is? <laughs> my bad, my bad, kid. Well, <laughs> Only the greatest Kobe. baseball player ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was, of course he was I know Kobe Bryant. Is. What do you think? I live under fucking rock. <laughs> well, look, white live in California. I don't know who Kobe is. What are you trying to say? He said a quote when he had got injured, he pulled his Achilles. And when he went back to the locker room, his kids was watching him. His wife was watching him. But specifically, his kids were watching him. And he said, as a parent, you got to be the example. So he go back to the locker room. He tell his kids, you know, everything's going to be okay. Instead of going back there saying, oh, my Achilles, like screaming and crying, he's going back there calmly saying, everything's going to be okay. You know, that's fine. That's fine. And... <laughs> So like just listen to that, man. Like literally just gotta be the example through everything. Like just stay strong. Because the stronger you are, the stronger your kids will be. Mm-hmm. That's true. I have a little bit of pushback on the first part of that. As you said, set the example. What if I'm a parent and I see the example is that, you know, that uh I should be treated differently based on where I live. I think that's important. I, I think I should get better respect from where I live. And I believe that's important to teach my kids. What can we do to shift that? Like that just, I realize that's a, that's a $10 billion question, but what can we do? What can we do to get people to, to, to be, I guess, more responsive than reactive? To know that we all connected. 
either way, we are connected. So say, for example, I would never do this, but if we're in person, I take a knife and stab my knife, a knife through my hand, you're going to feel that emotionally. You know what I mean? So we all emotionally connected. We all bleed red. So you can't look at somebody as somebody better than somebody if they're trying. You know, you have to embrace that person because that blessing is not going to come to you for being that way. That blessing is going to go to that person who's trying. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Um, I was actually, let's see what Robert's saying here. Sometimes Robert's got some, he says, if everyone suddenly did this, the country would be saved overnight with some adjustments to kickstart those small and medium businesses that will also save the economy. I think it goes back to a, a point that we were talking about earlier, but yes. And Don says we are all connected. I mean, that's so true. It's so true. And what you just said, I mean, I think of things like if I could say something that's like just really crass, I've never heard of anybody getting a blood transfusion. I've asked people this that, that, that I know were like borderline assholes. Let's just be honest. Like, did you ask what color the person came from that blood that just saved your life? No. Yeah. Cause we all bleed the same. We all have the same emotion. I tell people we're more alike than we are different. And right now we have more an amazing opportunity to see that and sit there and, and to have you know, open-ended discussions and just to really realize what's the biggest impact that we want to leave. We want to leave a legacy for our kids so that when they look back in the history books that it doesn't say 2021 through 2024, they monkey fucked the world into oblivion. The end, right? Exactly. <laughs> so I think about, I think about this and I'm going to, I'm going to tie this up because I want to get, I want to get your social media stuff. Um, this is something that, uh, Dennis said, Dennis Waitley on that psychology of success a couple of days ago that has stuck with me. So that's why I went back to it. But he, and I wrote it up there. It's God's God is my witness is right there. He says, I, cause he went, he talked about candidly, like when he was successful and he was on the road, he goes, I wasn't always there for them. And I was always this. So he was talking about regrets, which is, you know, me, I always talk about regrets that I don't want any. Um, but he said in those moments, he goes, am I being the dad, for example, and I use this one, am I being the dad that I would be excited to have right now in this moment. So when I was camping, I was in there being lazy and he was on his iPad and I was like, am I being the dad that I would be excited about having in this moment where we're in this RV and we're at this campground and I'm five years old and I can give a shit if it's hot outside. I want to go play. That shifted me massively. It was like, am I being the husband that if I was my wife that I would want to be? So those, those questions, man, those questions could get us to shift and say, no, I'm not. I wouldn't want my kid to, I wouldn't want to, to be around a reactive dad all the time who yelled at the TV. No, I would want a dad that took me out and played and, and taught me stuff. Would I want to be the husband who comes home every night grumpy and, and bitching about work when I haven't seen you all day and I just, and I've been alone and, and I would just want to talk? No. Would I want to be the sister? Would I want to be the, the, the dad, whatever it is, if we ask ourselves those questions, Ooh. So what do you think about that? Mr. Sean Jackson? Well, that, that ties in with your, 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 your sets, which is your, your heart set, your mindset, your health set and your soul set, which is four key vital points that we have to really tie into because that's, those are important. You know, your mindset is important. Your health set is definitely important. Your heart set is definitely important and your soul set is important. And that's just to go back to what you just said, you know? So if your health set ain't right, you can't produce fully on your, on your business. If your heart ain't right, you know, if your heart ain't into it. If you, if you bring in the, the, the past into your, to your business, as in like the, the heartache and the pain, you're not going, you're not going to be successful. You know, you got to get all four sets on, on, on all in tune with one another, you know? Literally, it has to flow together, and I love it. You know, I do a room of clubhouse about that. You know, about heart set, health set, mindset, and um, soul set. And I try to get people to know that all four of us are very vital, and and being an entrepreneur, and, I, and not not even being an entrepreneur, man, just in in work and life in general. Like, if, you, if all four of us aren't aren't right, you you're not gonna be right as a person. You know, you're just gonna be one confused person because. Your heart gonna be broken. Your mind not gonna be right. So your grind not gonna be right. So you gonna now you gonna be broke because your mind ain't right. So, like it's very vital to get all four sets. Yep. <laughs> then it, then it starts becoming that vicious cycle. That vicious cycle of what of yeah, help others soar. 
Yeah. And I think Dennis said that as well. When you make other people more successful, if you, if you strive to make other people successful, they'll make you successful too. Yeah. I, I have a trouble with that one lately. I've been trying to make people <laughs> successful and some people have been stabbing me in the back. I won't say names. I'm not going to be that much of a dick. Uh, Olga, what's up, Olga? Thank you so much for being here. She says, he or she says, uh, I love this. We need to put ourselves in other people's shoes uh, to be the best mom, wife, daughter. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much Absolutely. for being here. We appreciate you. Um, Olga. Yeah. No, Olga. Olga's a female talk. I was like, I don't have my glasses on, ladies and gentlemen. So I was like, what does that say? See, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> do you guys think I should wear my glasses when I do my show now? Because now I feel like I'm just like too geeky. I'm like, oh, look at me. But actually, I can see the fucking screen. That's pretty cool. Uh, helping to others soar. You did that tonight, Sean Jackson. Thank you so much. Where can people get a hold of you? Where can they continue the conversation with you? Uh, what's your website? Uh, my website is www.us slash ns.com. Dash and, ns. Uh, that slash. For those people listening, it's dash ns. Right? Yeah, dash. My bad, dash. Yeah. And where are you at on Instagram? You can find me on Instagram, Upsty, U-P-S-T-Y, L-L-C. Yeah. What do you usually post on Instagram? Tell the people. Give them a sneak peek of what you usually post on Instagram. Oh, I love posting motivational content. You know, I post people to get up in the morning time. So, for example, tomorrow morning I'll wake up, I'll just get up until people wake up. While I'm working, y'all sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's get it. Let's get it. It's time, to get get it. it's time to get it's time to get up and, and have a, a beautiful day you know get up and, and get the blood flowing i tell people mm. all the time the earlier you get up you're able to get stuff done early you're able to conquer your day a lot early so when you get home now you're able to relax and, and reflect you know if you're running around scrambling around trying to find stuff you're not really getting up and handling your business no you're not you're starting to, starting the day off like a chicken with your head cut off <laughs> Sean Jackson, thank you for so much for being here on the Ron and Scripted Show, just having this, this candid conversation with me. I know, I know, I know, I know we impacted people. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this on the replay or on the live, just put a comment in there what you took away. What was your nugget tonight? What was the thing that you took away? I'd love for to see those in the comments. And uh, myself and Sean will go back there and comment on those as well. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you guys being here. Um, but I know Darlene's got to go. Thank you so much for Darlene being here. And uh, we got Pamela Aubrey in the house. What's up, Pamela? She goes... She goes, hi guys, late to the show. I was doing my hair, but we'll catch the replay. You look great though. <laughs> we look great. Pamela is fixing her hair. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't even know who Pamela is. Who's Pamela Aubrey? Who's a, but she commented to here again. I have to quit working until nine so I can get up earlier. She works until nine. How cute is that? Right. <laughs> All right, brother. I'm going to place you backstage. I appreciate you. We're going to continue talking. Don't go anywhere. I want to close out the show. So there you have it. Beautiful people. Sean Jackson, AKA the refresher. And um, what an amazing conversation about, you know, opportunity, hope, um, the ability for us to really take ownership and take responsibility and accountability. We talked about that tonight uh, to change it where it is that we're at. So if you're in a situation that you're not happy, ask yourself, am I happy? Yes or no. If you're not, then sit there and decide what it is that you can do tomorrow, tonight, in the next 10 moments of, to change that. You can change that by being aware and being aware that life is happening for you and not to you and not to take that victim mindset. If Sean would taken that victim mindset in so many different situations, where would he be today? Where would I be today? I'd be dead or in jail. I can pretty much guarantee you. <laughs> or I'd be seriously psychotic because I have those tendencies. Sometimes that brain just kind of goes crazy, but it's all good because I'm unique. We're all unique. We all have the opportunity to stop, listen, reflect, like Sean said, stop, listen, reflect, and see where we're at. See where we're at emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, see where we're at in our journey of achieving the goals that we want to set out to achieve. See where we're at in defining what our best is. What is our best? I went through that conversation with myself today and thinking about stuff and thinking about what I'm bringing to the table in my different relationships. I'm like, Chris, you know, you, you think you have this perspective of, of that you're always there and you're always doing this, but are you really? And we can always ask ourselves, are you really? So again, those questions that, that I'm, I can't take credit for on these two, but Dennis Waitley said, am I being the best mom or am I, am I being the mom that I would be excited to be if I was that person? And so that's like, I, I think about that now. And I've always told you guys when, and this is something I didn't get to share with, with Sean. So I'll share it directly because he can still hear this. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do before I open my eyes is I say what I'm grateful for every morning. 
every morning. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for I woke up. I'm grateful for another day. I'm grateful my son's sleeping in the next room. I'm grateful for whatever it is that I'm grateful for. And sometimes they're the same things. And sometimes or many times they're new things because we always can find something else to be grateful for. I'm grateful that I have lights. I'm grateful that I get up and have a clean toothbrush to brush my teeth. I'm grateful that I have toilet paper, whatever it might be. I say what I'm grateful for before my eyes open. And then the next step, ladies and gentlemen, about taking responsibility for our day is I say what my intentions are. Are my intentions today to go out there and make people unhappy? No. Are my intentions to go out there and be a nasty mom? No. So why don't we set those intentions? So I invite each and every one of you starting tomorrow when you wake up, say what you're grateful for, then set your intentions. And this is how I do it. First one is always, I will be present and playful with my son. My intention is to be present and playful with my son. My intention is to set a good example for my son. My intention today is to, to bring value to the world in such a way that it makes it a better place. My intention for today is to be productive and not get, get distracted because I get distracted. My intention today is to catch myself when I'm thinking, whatever it might be for you, what is it for you? Start setting the intentions. And then after that, listen to some motivational content, read some content, journal, listen to this. I have a music playlist in the morning. It's called the morning playlist. If I feel kind of funky, if I didn't do what I did this morning, listen to Dennis on my audiobook. I have a morning playlist. It's got ABBA. It's got a uh, Hanson Mbop. It's got a bunch of songs that when I sing them and I dance around, I change my state. And when you change your state, ladies and gentlemen, you change your results. So go out there, be the change you want to see. Let's give an opportunity to every individual that we come in contact with to step back and have a response versus a reaction. Let's, let's question our judgments. Let's question our perspectives. Let's have opportunities to have engagement with one another in a way that lifts one another up. And that actually leaves the situation a little bit better for what it is that you did or said, whether they're a stranger, whether they're your neighbor, whether they're your best friend, let's all connect with one another. I thought of somebody today and I just, I, I thought, and I was like, I wonder how they're doing. And instead of just passing it by thinking I will do it later, I know them. I sent them an email. I'm like, hey, just checking in on you. We haven't had a conversation in a while. I want to make sure you're good. I know last time you said there was a couple of things going on. Just want to make sure everything's good. Make sure the family's good. I sent it off. That could be the best thing that person sees all day. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, is when we care and we care to take the actions to go support one another, whether it's a long friend or a family member, whatever it might be, we have the opportunity to impact people positively every single day with who we are and what we do especially with our kids. Like we talked with Sean tonight, please, if you have kids, I don't care how old they are. I don't, I don't care if they're fucking 35 years old, please, please be the example, set the example. If there's, if there's something that you brought them up to believe that now you're questioning, please have those conversations, ask them what their opinions are. You know, I encourage them to go seek different forms of, 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 of perspective right? Um, there's so much opportunity for us to all learn and grow together. It doesn't mean we have to change who we are. It doesn't mean we have to give up on our, on our beliefs or anything else, but it offers us the opportunity to see that we're actually really more similar than we are different. And I've proven that in the conversations that I've had with people over the last couple of weeks and just indirectly asking questions, we're all looking for the same stuff. We're just going about it completely differently. So let's all be the change we want to see. I love you guys. We'll be back here next Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with another awesome show, The Raw and Unscripted Show. And don't forget to go subscribe to the podcast. It's on your favorite podcast player everywhere. iTunes, iHeart, every, just Google the, the Raw and Unscripted podcast. You can subscribe to it. I love you guys. I appreciate you here again, again, whether you're live or on the replay. Sorry, I get a little excited and my brain goes faster than my mouth. I love you guys. Go out and have a beautiful night. We'll see you next time on The Raw and Unscripted Show. Peace.